Hey, where, where la YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know is that this, this is for of beauty, and you, you're very welcome. Now, a friend of mine, Anielika Lirma, recently created her own tag. And 2020 has just got too much for me. I'm going back to 2016. I'm back into doing tags. Because I wasn't on YouTube in 2016, so I missed out on all that fun. So I'm going to have fun. Now, excuse the fan, ridiculously hot, south-facing kitchen. Uh, I have filmed this makeup look. I think the makeup look has gone up before this film. I think. If it has, I'll, I'll link it below. If not, nudge me and I'll link it below. Right. Angelica's tag that she created is the Eyeshadow Palette Lover tag. So, there's only 10 questions. Thought I'd have a go. As ever, because of my chronic pain, I have not got the palettes out because you can bet your life if I start juggling palettes I'm going to end up dropping one and it's bound to be my favourite and I've already smashed the black in one of the palettes that I'm going to mention so <laughs> don't want to drop any more so I will be putting little pictures up of mine rather than showing you the actual palettes I hope that doesn't upset you too much. Uh, I will probably slide this way a bit and maybe slide you that way a little bit. And then uh, you're going to slide back a bit. There we go. Hmm. Gives me space to put pictures up. There we go. That's better. Okay. First question. A palette I regret I didn't buy. This would have to be the Dragon Child palette by Makeup Monsters or now Menagerie Cosmetics. I absolutely fell in love with that palette. I just couldn't afford it at the time with the postage on top and then the 20% import tax I'd pay plus a handling fee of anything up to 20 quid, 20, 25 quid sometimes. I just couldn't afford it. I was praying that it would come to something like Cult Beauty or Beauty Bay or even Bougie Shop over in the Netherlands because obviously I can, you know, at the moment, till bloody Brexit finally goes through. God help us. Um, I believe we can still buy from the EU without paying any tax on arrival. Um, but it never came to any of those places and I never managed to get it and now, now it no longer exists. And I'm gutted. Because I love that palette. Moving on, question two. A palette I regret buying. Conspiracy. I got sucked in. Don't get me wrong, I like the colour story. But I got sucked in from that. What was it, six week long, basically, advert that Shane 
did with this series of Jeffrey, given the stuff that's come out about them both since then. Regular viewers will know I used to love Jeffrey Star's makeup. Um, didn't think much of him as a person, but loved his makeup. But I have since depotted everything and anonymised it within my collection. And that's the worst insult I can pay you. So I really regret buying into the hype of that. And to a certain extent I regret the last palette of his I bought, which was cremated. There were a lot of repeat shades. I should have just bought Grimoire from Viggy Cosmetics and used my discount code, basically. Lesson learned. Question three. A palette I haven't used as much as I thought. ABH Riviera. Cue the red dwarf thing that goes up in my head every time I say that word. This is a job for the Riviera kid. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I... It was the first really colourful palette that ABH bought out. Now, whether I didn't use it as much because the Alyssa Edwards palette came out shortly after, and I used that one more, I'm not sure. It could be. Um, but I haven't used Riviera. This is a job for the Riviera kid. Anywhere near as much as I thought I would. A palette I've used more than I thought. Kaleidos Cyber Bronze. It's a neutral palette. I bought it for the red and the silver, to be quite honest. Uh, but I actually like it, even though it's a neutral palette. Um, I love colourful makeup. What can I say? They creep up on you, don't they? My favourite half neutral, half colourful palette. Probably Juvia's Deuce palette. Not what most people would think of as half neutral, half colourful, but for me, that's half neutral, half colourful, and I like that palette. A palette I bought for the packaging. And this is the one where I've smashed the bloody black. Because I dropped it. This is the LA Splash Horror palette. Didn't really need it. It's just another rainbow palette. But... That packaging, come on, that's gorgeous. And it continues round to the back of it as well. Um, just stunning. But yeah, gutted that the black smashed. And then it sort of like shattered across all the other colours as well. So, ah, <sighs> deep joy. I may end up depotting it um, and just sticking the cover up on the wall behind me somewhere. A palette that I like the shimmers more than the mattes. Mm. Probably the Mini Masquerade by Juvia's. I mean, some of the shimmers in that, particularly the colourful ones, the, the sort of the tealy, turquoisey blues and the pinks. It's just. Ooh, really nice, really nice. A palette you like the mattes more than the shimmers. Probably the Colourpop Yes Please palette. That was, I believe, the first one of their eyeshadow palettes that they actually bought out. Um, and was a dupe of the Sunset palette from Natasha Denona. 
beautiful creamy buttery mats in it. Shimmers are a bit lacklustre though, they weren't they weren't shiny enough for me, they weren't impactful enough. You know? Lovely palette, lovely shirt, great for work, because the shimmers are not impactful, but I like the cha 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 cha. Two questions left. Number nine, the palette that happily surprised you. Brew from September Rose. Um, I've got her slush palette and slush too. And she bought Brew out, which is her neutral palette. And obviously I've got a discount code with her. So I messaged her and said, can I use my own discount code against the brew palette? And she went, do you think you'd like the brew palette? Well, there's something about it that intrigues me. So she sent me the brew palette, which I thought was really lovely of her. And it arrived, and photos don't do it justice. When I've shown it on camera, it doesn't do it justice. It's not a boring neutral palette. It's, it's got greeny undertoned browns and reddy undertoned browns and orange undertoned browns. It's really just... You can get some bomb looks out of that palette. And that, really, that was the first time that a neutral palette actually interested me. Now I've got quite a few neutral palettes, but that was the one that really made me realise that not all palettes are equal and not all neutral palettes are boring final question a palette with the most interesting colour story it's from a company that no longer exists sadly and when I found out they were closing down I bought a backup of this palette Regular viewers will already know that I am talking about Blush Tribe Hasina 2. That, my darlings, is me in a palette. Purple, blue, green, hello, bring it on. She said wearing the most neutral look possible. There's a reason I've got a neutral look on. If you watch the tutorial for this, you will find out why. My dimple is back. Right. Fantastic. That shows you how much weight I've lost my dimple to come back. Right. That is my... Or that... Those are my answers to Angelica's tag. So... If you're watching this and you have a channel, I challenge you to do this tag. If you're watching this and you don't have a channel, you could always pop your answers in the comments box below. I would love to find out just you know what other people's answers are because who knows, it may actually inspire me to look at a palette that I've not considered before. You never know. You never know. Thank you for that, Angelica. That was an awesome tag. I really enjoyed doing that. Um, and I hope you liked my answers. Right. Regular viewers, you know what I'm going to say now. YouTuber are still locking you all off. It's getting ridiculous. Uh, please double check you're still subscribed. Um, when they changed the system a couple of weeks ago where they stopped emailing you when you get uh, a new video coming out, they also changed all of my notifications anyway from all 
down to personalised, so it might be worth double checking that. Even when I change mine back to all, I'm still not getting emails, but on the hope that uh, they'll change the system again without telling us and start sending us emails, it's, it's worth double checking, not just on my channel, but on all of the people you follow. A, that you're still subscribed, B, that your notifications are still on, and C, that your notifications are set to all. Uh, if however you are new here, hi, hello, welcome, hope you've enjoyed it here, lovely to see you, looking fabulous today darling I must say. Uh, it'd be awesome if you two would love to join the 4F family, we are one of the nicest families on YouTube and it's super easy to join us, uh, just just down, down there somewhere, just, just down there is a little red subscribe button. If you click that and turn it grey, you become a member of the 4F family. Then you can ring my bell, ring my bell, and choose all notifications in the hope that you get told at some point when I release a new film. Until then, there are an awful lot of other films of mine that you can watch. Now I have said for some considerable time and often it echoed on less imaginative channels but they don't have a long clawed Sammy the Sloth straw protector then. I wouldn't take them on. Have you seen the length of a sloth straw? Sloth straw. Sloth's claws. I'm losing the plot fights. It's getting far too hot. Basically if you're looking for a bit of me time, grab a drink, grab a snack, push your feet up, pick a playlist and indulge. There's lots going on and this neutral look, not what I normally do. Check out a few tutorials and you'll see what I mean. Right, my lovelies, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.